Victoria's private schools have a long history of sporting excellence and one of the captains of the footy teams of one of those private schools is Sean Tanner. He, he joins us on Ben TV. Sean, um, tell us about your team and uh, its background and your background with it. So my team's Penley Essendon Grammar School, old boys, so Pegs Footy Club. I went to the school Penley and Essendon Grammar for year 11 and 12. Very, very heavily footy focused school and the old boys are just, uh, I guess, the, the next gestation of that. There are a long tradition of um, private schools and football in the state. Um, something a bit foreign to me, I've got to admit, but um, I know it's very much entrenched. I can only imagine that with that entrenchment of culture comes a lot of homophobia. Tell us your experience of it. So my, my experience, as I mentioned earlier today, was uh, because I don't fit what you know society is, says as the stereotypical gay person, not, not a lot of people knew, or no one really knew that I was gay, so the homophobia level to me was more what I call casual homophobia. The words, you know, poof and that's so gay used in a negative context around me really impacted me because I always thought that, okay, if they're saying that about a gay person, it means they don't really respect gay people. If they don't respect gay people and I came out to them, then they're not going to respect me. My whole relationship with them will change. Yeah. And in that negative sort of uh, that mental mindset, it's it's very very tough. How did you then become captain of the team? I mean, uh, you must have really hit it well. Yeah. So I, I was lucky enough to play some good good footy early on in my career. So won uh, I won a couple of best and fairest my first couple of years of senior footy, and you know, from that sort of stemmed a, I guess a, just a respect around the playing group that okay he's a good player. I, I'm generally okay with speaking in front of crowds and talking to people, so I come off as quite confident. So they say, okay, well, you, you're good at representing our club. And that's, I guess, how I sort of... Kind of Confidence can be a beautiful mask sometimes, <laughs> can't very, it? Very true. <laughs> very true. You as, put, me, put me in part in one sentence. <laughs> as uh, people who use microphones know all too well. Very much so. Uh, so getting through that means a lot of work personally. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's... It's tough and I, early on, so the reason I, I joined Jason as an ambassador with Beyond Blue is because I love the work they do, but also because I had a personal history with mental illnesses and depression and things like that. Unfortunately for myself, I didn't have the education that's around at the moment, so back then I didn't get any, any formal treatment or formal diagnosis of mental health, so I really went through it by myself when I shouldn't have. And you know, as all too many people do. 100%, yeah. that's, that's yeah. an all too common story. And you know, the, the, the message that I send through my talks with Beyond Blue now, you know, seek help early. Even if you are, you don't want to seek help to a family or a friend. No shame in it. There's no shame in it. Yeah. You, you can, having a mental health illness is fine, and they're very treatable if you get onto them early enough, that kind of thing. And that's where sort of my story stemmed from. So, Sean, you're uh, coming out to your team. Uh, how did you go about doing that? It must have been a hell, a hell of a time. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. It was interesting. So I'd, uh, I'd come out to my family, and I thought, okay, well, so my family know, my cousins know. What's the next? What's the next best thing? I have to start talking to my friends, and my a lot of my friends play at, at Pegs as well, and I spoke to. Rob, who's uh, one of my best mates, and we were, as funny enough, we were coming uh, coming home from a night out, drunk at McDonald's, and we we're just in a in a booth, and I just said, you know, something I've been wanting to tell you for a while. You know, Rob, I'm gay, and he just went, cool. Did he expect and, anything? No, not really. He said, he goes, look, I'm. I'm surprised, I right. won't lie, but yep. mate, he goes, you've been my best mate for five years and that's not going to change. And I spoke to him about my, my fear for coming out to the club and he said, mate, don't be ridiculous. You know, you, you're well loved by the players, you're the captain, you're a, you know, you're a, you're a fantastic leader of the club. They're not going to change. You've got no, you know, you're crazy for thinking it's going to be any different. And it's not like you're a different person last week than you are this week. hundred <laughs> percent. No, that's the sort of thing and that's, that's the almost verbatim what he yeah. said. You know, I hold no difference of opinion to you now than I did at the start of the night. Did everyone feel that way? There was the only, uh, it's not even a, a negative, uh, a negative story towards it. One of my friends I don't speak to as much that I, that, as I used to, but I mean, that could be, an, everyone, everyone grows up, that he has happens. kids now, so yeah. it just happens with life, I think. Yeah. Well, you're an inspiration to many. It's well, great to you. see another face and another voice um, in the footy space uh, doing great work. So, Fantastic. Sean, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, Dean. Much Cheers. appreciated. Kate Jenkins is Victoria's Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commissioner and she joins us on Bent TV here at the 2015 Pride Cup. Welcome. Hi, thanks Dean. It's your second year to the Pride Cup. Uh, bigger is. and better this year than it was last year. It's a, a good thing. Absolutely, a really exciting thing and I think the momentum's building so I'm really hopeful that attitudes will change with that. Now the Commission's been doing a lot of work in sport for some time with Fair Go Sports. Tell us how that's evolving. 
So we're doing Fergo sports both in a number of codes like hockey and basketball, cycling, soccer. We're also doing work in schools, which is really exciting. And for today, we did the training for the different teams on how they can understand and support um, building a more inclusive sporting team. We heard earlier that that's a really important component to a day like today. Um, how much is involved with something like that? So, you know, for quite a small investment, we can really change and improve attitudes. Our team that worked with the sporting clubs um, educated them on a, a, an interesting model. So they taught about edit, educate, echo, which is a model where they taught how to respond to when things are happening. So the edit is just when you can speak up and say, no, you shouldn't say that. Yeah. Educate is to really be saying, and do you know the consequence of you doing that is this and echo is really to support others when they're speaking up so really simple tools that help people who want to make a change learn how to do that before any of that connects though you've got to know why homophobia is uh, so damaging to a society on the whole and that's kind of where we're at with a lot of this is is getting that message out that it's not always about the individual, it reflects directly on us as a community and as a world. I absolutely agree. And the other thing we were doing with that education is to educate on what are the consequences, what's the damage to individuals and really to our community, and then what are the benefits of diversity. So and there are huge benefits. Great, yeah. great benefits. And really, at the base level, it's letting people perform to their best, and that's what we all want to do. And it's pretty tragic to think that some people don't get that chance. Mm -hmm. And yet we've lived with it for so long. Absolutely, and uh, you know, from my role, it's been unlawful for a fair while, uh, but attitudes don't seem to keep up with the law change, but I'm hoping there is a bit of winds of change now. I've got a theory that laws are only half of the equation, and that it's the storytelling behind why those laws are required, and the personal impact of why those changes are needed, that is the, driving the cultural change. What is it that we're lacking in that space, do you think, in, in this country? Because we're pretty good at drafting new laws and implementing those when we need to. We're not good at dri driving the cultural change required quick enough, I don't think. I agree. I'm equally impatient. Um, I'm a lawyer, but I don't believe the law laws fix too much. They just sort of set the rules. And they're useless uh, unless they're uh, uh, policed, I guess. That's right, yeah. implemented. Yeah. I think what we're learning now is that um, change requires every single person to change. And I think the narrative has been, this is up to individual, an individual person. If, if you do something, then that will make a difference. But actually, no, it's everyone. So if I think about the role I'm in, a lot of what I think I've learned is that it is about everyone's small kind of behaviours and attitudes that makes the difference, not about a law and what you need to do or one person needs to do. It's not just about a single person, it's about everyone. Now you're going to get a, uh, a new colleague working alongside you shortly with the uh, initiation of a, a, well by the Minister for Equality, a Commissioner for Equality. Is that going to lighten your load, do you think? Or, uh... I think that's going to create a whole lot more momentum <laughs> in the best possible way. So I don't think it will lighten my load, but I think it will get the action and the movement that we've been waiting for. I think it will continue that momentum. Well, we're very fortunate to have you doing the great work that you do, and thank you very much for joining us on Bed TV. Thanks, Dean.